Hey guys, one like a trapper signing in here. Um, yeah, um, just trying to give you guys an update of what's going on. We haven't done much lately. Um, we just had about eight inches of snow, which is now gone. So it's kind of slowing us down. Um, we don't have a lot going on. We got a uh, coyote hunting tournament this weekend to hit up. And then we have a... Uh, that's about it. Got some work coming up. If it snows, I'll be working. If it doesn't, I'm not really doing much. I'm sitting here just trying to turn some furs into some product and uh, doing a bunch of odd and end stuff just to make money here and there. So, just to kind of give you a rundown of what we're looking at and what we're doing is, um, I got a buddy of mine coming to pick up what is this? The skunk hat. So I'm just waiting for a liner for it. Um, and I think we're just going to put like a bomber hat underneath of it with a bill. Help keep some of the fur out of the way. I mean, I like it. First one I've ever made. It looks good. Um, and then the other thing we're working on is I cut up a lot of fur. So, and I'm going to pull it out so you guys can see what we got laid out here on the kitchen floor. But, uh, yeah. Just getting it laid out. But I'm working on that right now. Um, it's big enough for a throw blanket right now, but I'm going to put one more on here. And then that's uh, roughly 70 inches because each one of those is about 10 inches. So we're sitting at... Well, that'll be only 60. I thought I had six on her. Apparently I only have five on her. One, two, three, four, five. So I got one more I got to cut up and I'm going to put in there. Um, now give me six, and that will be 60 inches, and then I'll add six more on the other side here, and then, uh, maybe on that side, I don't know which side I'm going to add it on to, but we're going to add those on there, and, uh, make it double wide, so that'll make it 60 by 64, which is about, hopefully about a full size. I don't know if I'm going to trim it with anything, but I will end up putting, like, um, some sort of material underneath there. It just depends on how warm of a blanket I want it to be. I can probably get some flannelly material. If not, I got a wool blank, military wool blanket in the basement I could probably put on there. But we're going to do that. And then uh, um, something else I've been working on. I had uh, my taxidermy buddies call me up and ask me to put some fuzz on this mule deer. It's a pretty good sized muley. I mean, that's a 300-inch bull for you. 320s, three, something like that. He's a pretty big bull. So, um, probably 24 inch tine right there. But, uh, no, he's a good deer. So, we put the fuzz on there. So, camera doesn't do it justice, but it looks really good. This side's pretty well dry. I just did this side. So, um, you can kind of still see the glue. I kind of like it because it kind of gives it that, uh, that veiny look so it makes it a little look a little more natural and that's just doing a sloppy job on the the gluing leaving some areas heavier than others and lighter in other areas but um so i'm excited to get that going back to the taxidermist um so he could get that mounted see what it looks like because we paid to have our shipped out my buddy came out and we shot uh we both shot muleys but uh, we paid, I think that one, it was a dollar an inch to get velvet on it. And we had to cut the skull plate in half and then ship it to like Florida or something. So I picked up the supplies and trying to learn how to do it. And uh, it's turned out pretty good. I got a couple. If you look in some of my older videos, you'll see them. But, uh, I think my stuff will look as good as that. But just to give you an overview, is I didn't do that one. I paid to have that one done. There's some of my deer. So, um, yeah, we take, like, deer like this. This one was, a, I don't know, roadkill or poached or died of CWD or whatever, chronic wasting disease. But we epoxy the tips a little bit rounder. So they're not as pointy so that we can get the fuzz sticking on the ends. 
So I epoxy them and then uh, glue them and fuzz them. I got a whole little box of stuff here that I work with. And then, uh, but yeah, eventually I'll come in here and uh, get this other one. It's going to get dark here and going in my closet here. I'm going to lace it in the plate wall. But uh, eventually it'll look like this one here. So let me try to get it set up on the table or couch. But, uh, so eventually, we're hoping it looks like this. I, that one, we wanted it a little bit lighter, just because of what the picture of that mule deer looks like. So, that's what we're doing. Don't mind the pants, I was wearing those today, but then I got hot. But, uh, yeah, so we're going to try to get it looking just like this one. This one's complete dry, it's been dry for a while. This was my, my pilot. My promotional one let's say that it would have burned this one died of chronic wasting disease i found it last year in a burn i did get the site tag for it so um but yeah so that's what we're hoping for and uh, i mean like, i like the way it looks i'm pretty sure the taxidermist will like it so um and again we're watching naruto cartoons just something for background noise for me um like i said i've been sewing up that blanket and I've been uh, working on this, and we went through all the fur, so we'll do a breakdown of that one, but we got quite a bit, so I was trying to figure out budgeting, and the reason why I'm doing this blanket is if I could sell one blanket, I'll pay for all my fur to get tanned, because I've got, we're going to have well over 70 pelts going to the tannery this year, so um, we're trying to hit 100 plus, which I think will hit pretty damn easy. It just means that in my stuff alone I'd have over 100 pelts. But I'm not going to send all the coons. But uh, yeah, so we got to get this blanket brushed out. My daughter's been laying with it and snuggling with it. Um, I'm pretty much out of fur though, so I, I didn't... I'm going to call my dad up. I know he's got a few and then I'll just have him take what he wants out of there as replacement. But I think he might have enough for me to be able to uh, finish this blanket off. So... Um, but I'm out unless I start using my collection and I really don't want to do that. So I've only got a few left um, in my collection here. So I really like these colors here on these bigger ones. Um, they're just good big males and then I have my super light one. And I got another one that's just a little bit darker. So eventually I'm going these two, at least this one 100%. I'll keep for my permanent collection. This one I wouldn't mind letting go if somebody was interested in buying it. Full with legs, just rug mount design. Um, these two are just tubes. So, but uh, I need to keep a couple. I'd like to sell one or two because if I, since I cut up all mine, it uh, leaves me with damn near nothing. Um, so if I try, if I have people call me up and say, hey, I want to buy some, I really don't have any because I just cut up. $500, $600 worth of pelts. So, um, but like I said, if I could sell a queen size or a full size blanket for about a thousand bucks, I mean, I don't know what they go for. Let me know what you guys think. I know if you were to send it in to get made, it costs you about eight to a thousand dollars just to have somebody else make it. And I'm providing the materials, the supplies, and I'm doing all the sewing work. So, but anyway, guys, that's what we've been up to. Like I said, we have a competition coming up this weekend. Um, usually, if I could get into some hobby hunts, that'd be it'd probably be a little bit more suitable for uh, filming. I don't know when I'll have time to do that with this weather. Like I said, we got three inches of rain and then eight inches of snow on top of the rain, and now it's in the last three days it's completely thawed out to almost nothing. So it's kind of making it tough to do anything. It's real nasty outside. But, uh, yeah. I just wanted to keep you guys in the loop. There's not much going down today. We're just hanging out. Um, I got to try to get down to go visit Trapper Jay here. I got some construction projects in here I need to get done. I want to get the man cave done because if I could get that done, then I can get that whole pile of deer antlers. And my these are my keeper pile. Those ones stay in the house. There's some pretty cool ones. I don't know if we've ever gone over a shed deal for you guys. Oh, white tail cribs, huh? 
so but uh yeah this one was a road shed i found him sitting uh i was literally driving to go fishing and i seen it laying right on the side of the high the gravel road i got this match set i think i'm gonna give to my boy there's a little 10 point two year old real good genetics i should have went down there and tried to hunt him this year but i didn't too far of a drive, but then we got the one I ran over last year. You'll see that in one of our hunting videos or trapping videos. It's the one that came off of that property I ran over with a four wheeler three days in a row before I finally seen it. And then uh, this big three point here. Hold on, there. they're kind of locked in here. So, again, it's a giant three point. He ended up. Uh, Talking to a couple people from that area, and they're saying he's a big seven. And they actually gave me the year a couple years before this, and he was a big three on that one side and four on the other. Oh, um, he's big. I, I was actually trying. I was actually wanting to hunt that deer. And I got this match set here. Found them in a burn, real heavy, dense. So it's, it's a deer that does. Like if you seen it on the hoof, you probably wouldn't think much of it, but it's a solid set of antlers. Um, I got this little goofy bastard so I actually shot that deer and his uh, antler popped off when I walked up to him he was laying he was laying on top of it and then that big guy there um yeah he's he's probably my biggest shed I don't know it's kind of tough I've got some big ones but they're not as high scoring I mean I got this match set here I swiped these out from in front of my wife and they're actually probably very comparable bucks. Just don't score nearly as much because they don't have the tines, the extra tines and the length and everything. But uh, yeah, we swiped this one out for my wife on accident. We were just, I was zigzagging when I had my two legs. She's crippled, so she was walking real slow through burn area. And she had already found two or three small ones that I walked over and I just happened to look down the line we caught about 100 yards in front of her and seen some, seen th just this one. And the match one's in the pile down here, but, um, yeah, there's, um, uh, that buck's a dead head. The one underneath of that skull cap, I'm eventually going to mount. The one there, that's an older buck. I would like to get him mounted, too. He's nothing big and fancy. I'll go over those another day, but that's pretty much my keeper pile. Here's that old shed from that big three-point. So, um, yeah, there's a big five point I found in there last year. Same place I found them locked bucks. But that's it, guys. Just a bullshit session with you. I haven't seen you in a while, and I don't know if we want to do vlogs where I kind of just break down my entire day for you. Um, I've just been hanging out with the dogs, being a housewife. Um, trying to get things done. Like that everything I do, I do a little bit here, a little bit there. But I make a little bit of money here and a little bit of money there. And so I'm still working. I'm just what, like doing like 10 jobs a week. So, um, or 10 jobs a month. And then I'm able to take care of the kids. But we're still looking for a real job. Um, I'm just looking for that perfect fit. So, but being out of the work industry this long, it's kind of hard to jump right back into it and saying, hey, I'm going to go balls to the wall. But, all right, guys, well, that's all I got for you. Sorry it was so long, but uh, just again, like I said, we've been working on some stuff. That mule deer was the big project I wanted to get done today. It's kind of tough. I think the next thing I'm going to do is work on developing a stand that I can put that thing on that will move so I can just grab it and twist it grab it and roll it and everything else but uh, this way I'm not trying to have to hold it with one hand and work with it the shaker in the other hand and for something that you know, white tail is not bad because everything's tight and compact and right in there so uh, but uh, all right, guys, well, I'm going to get back to watching my cartoons. Kids should be home any minute now. We're going to go work up on the yard a little bit more. And then we'll, uh, yeah, 
try to get ready for this next round of snow we got coming. But as always, God bless, guys, and just uh, keep after it. Um, that's all I got. All right, take care. We'll see you in the next video. Hopefully, we got something cool showing you. Um, if I could, I might. Like I said, I think I told you guys this last time. I might try to hook up with my buddy Corey and try to get him in on the YouTube stuff, and we can collaborate until he gets going. But uh, and start getting you guys some thermal hunts recorded. Now that I know how to work all of his guns and his uh, scanner and stuff. I know how to do all that stuff, so now we'll start getting a little bit better videos. And he's constantly uploading videos to me, so. Um, but, alright guys, we'll talk to you soon. And like I said, hopefully we have some stuff. Ice fishing went to shit. Or if anything, we'll be ready for spring fishing here in about a week or so. Um, they're just, there's no uh, ice. It's dangerous ice. I'm not doing any beaver trapping. Same deal. It's just we didn't get the ice and stuff we were supposed to get been 50 degrees so all right guys we'll talk to you soon and hopefully we have something cool